What's up, Fanversation fans? I'm Katie Cullen, and I'm here at the Knights of the Zodiac red carpet premiere. Here's who I talk with tonight. I'm here with Diego. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing amazing. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm so honored, and it's such a privilege to be here. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. So you sound like you're living your best life right now. 100%. I mean, we're back in person, right? COVID kind of slowed things down and shut it down for a while. So now that we're able to do this in person, it's, it, it's awesome. I, I, I had no complaints about this industry. I love every part of it from start to finish. When, you, when you're finishing up a project, when you're first starting. And now I feel like this is like the celebration time, you know? So we are at the Knights of the Zodiac red carpet premiere. Were you familiar with Saint Seiya and Knights of the Zodiac as a franchise before you took this role? I wasn't familiar with Knights of the Zodiac, but I grew up with Dragon Ball Z and I was aware of like the impact that anime had on culture as a whole. So I knew that this was something big. And then when I called my cousins back home in South America and Mexico, they informed me this was huge. <laughs> so what sort of research did you do approaching this film? So I wrapped up my TV show that I was doing for Netflix for four years and I hopped on a flight straight to Budapest. and. I did a lot of research on that 12 hour flight, you know? I did, uh, I watched the original anime. I watched as much uh, uh, footage as I could on my character, studied his mannerisms, studied his behavior, the way he talked, the way he moved, all of that stuff. And then I, what I found most fascinating was his past. I really took his past, and I, that was what fueled my character, that's what gave him motivation. If you watch the original anime, he's been through so much trauma from, from watching the love of his life get murdered, from watching his little brother get, uh, you know, separated from his little brother. So I use that primarily as the fuel to motivate why he's, why he's so evil, I guess you can say, on the big screen. So every villain is the protagonist of their own story. How does his motivation speak to that? How did you work that in? I think he has a lot of trust issues. I don't think he trusts anybody and I don't think he wants to put any responsibility, especially not the responsibility of the fate of mankind, onto anybody, especially not Athena, right? I mean, uh, uh, sorry, Sienna, because Sienna can turn into Athena, the goddess of war, the goddess of destruction. And he doesn't like that idea. He doesn't like that there's this human being potentially turns into a goddess, destroys humanity. He's already seen enough trauma. He doesn't want to see that anymore. He wants to see the world safe. He wants to see it safe for himself, for his, for his brother, and, and for all of mankind as a whole, right? So that's what I use as motivation. Am I right? I don't know. But that's what I use. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's right, it's his, it's what he thinks. 100%, yeah. I would have done things differently, but... Well, yeah, that's, that's the acting portion of villain. things. <laughs> Not tonight. I only play one in movies. Exactly. So, we're at Knights of the Zodiac. What is your Zodiac sign, and do you think it fits you as a person? I'm a Sagittarius. Yes, I do, but only for the good stuff. The bad stuff, no. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, thank you so much for talking with thank us you. tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you.